What's yeah. going on, world? It's your boy, Kuya P. This is Nerds Rule the World, the NRW. And as you see on the screen and right behind me, I'm a superstar right now. She's killing it. She's an actor. She's a dancer. She's an author. She's everywhere. Shout out to Lila Fitzgerald, star of the upcoming Lucky Hank on AMC, Gulia Yelps in Monster High. And as you see, she's a writer, y'all. Stars and swashbucklers. And I was also excited to see when I was on your Twitter. You're a ballerina. You you dance classical ballet. My daughter uh, is with the Washington Ballet. Uh, she's done stuff with ABT. Uh, like, I got to show her like you. Because she's like, you know, straight up ballet is life right now. But she wants <laughs> to transition into like acting and doing a lot of stuff you're doing. So I'm like, babe, you got to check out Lila Fitzgerald. She's killing it. Shout out to you, Lila. Lila in the house. Let me shoot off some air horns. You won't hear right now. It's in post. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to chat with you. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to chat with you. Uh, my daughter was also a huge Monster High fan. So like seeing that the movie got made and you killed it there and now you got a sequel in the works. Like, where do you find the time? Like also as well, you're doing all these things. Can, can we start there? I, I'm going to be fully honest with you. I don't really know. My <laughs> When I was writing the first book, I actually wrote it entirely in secret. So writing Stars and Swashbucklers was mostly happening at night on my phone under the covers. So my sister, who I shared a room with, wouldn't know that it was happening. Um, so really for writing, it sort of happened in the hours I was supposed to be sleeping. Luckily, now I get to do that while I'm actually awake and a little more coherent. <laughs> um, but with acting and dancing and writing, I really like to keep busy. I don't, you know, like sitting still. So <laughs> I kind of just keep myself moving at all times. Okay. So what started it off? Were you, were you a dancer first? Was that like the the, the gateway drug into everything else? <laughs> I was actually an actor first. I always, when I was growing up, I always said I wanted to be a singer, actor, dancer, and it was all one word for me. But I didn't start ballet until I was actually 12. Okay. Because I start I started really late. Um, you know, my mom tried to protect me from the ballet world, but I was in a movie that was directed by Vim Vendors, who is an absolutely incredible filmmaker. And he had done a film about the legendary choreographer Pina Bausch. Um it's it titled Pina, go watch it. It's beautiful. And it inspired me to be a ballerina. So then that has stayed since I was 12. I had to work pretty hard to catch up to other people my age. Um, but I made it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's go. I love it. I love it. So love, so love for acting. And then you developed a love for dance, which is why you got into it later. And your mom wanted to protect you. I know how as a dance parent as well. I, I know that I'm life. Heavy. I'm sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so bridging the two, uh, and and then you know you're I think you're like 18, 19 years old. So Nin you're still very young. Um, <laughs> how how was this transition? And and then were you a fan of Monster High? Like you know, and putting you out there as well before you landed Monster High. Big time. When I was growing up, I played with Gulia all the time. She was actually my favorite doll. Um, yes. so real full circle moment for me being on set and watching myself in the makeup and hair trailers slowly become the doll that I spent so much of my childhood playing with. Um, and also doing it while singing and dancing and hopefully making the next generation of kids feel good about themselves and embrace their uniqueness is really amazing. I love that. And uh, now we have a sequel. I don't want to talk too much about <laughs> it because we don't want to spoil it. Um, but what was it like when you got the word that this was going to happen again? It was so fun. Our director and producer actually got us into Zoom sessions and said they had some news. And Todd, our director, tried to prank us. And he was like, so we have to reach out because you're doing some things wrong on social media. And I, of course, was having like a mini you know heart attack because I was just thinking oh my god I'm about to get told off by Nickelodeon blacklisted but then he was like you're not promoting the second movie um and so that's how we all found out that is awesome good one good one were you <laughs> like oh oh mm. <laughs> we were all freaking out he got us <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we have a second one in the works, y'all. Gulia, Lila Fitzgerald's back as Gulia. Super excited for that. Uh, did you already wrap on that, or is it? Uh... We did. We finished end of February. Okay, sweet. So, so now just it's just <laughs> all in post. Now they got to get everything together. But super excited. Dropping at the end of this year, next year. 
It should be coming out this year. That's okay. the plan right now. Obviously, you know, in film things happen, but they seem to be pretty on track to get it out to audiences this year. Excellent. I know everyone is dying to see you return as Gulia in Monster High. Uh, my my daughter's well, heavy fan of that. And I enjoy it as well. I ain't gonna lie. I enjoy it. You know, and nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. It's fun to watch monsters dance around. Exactly. I love it. All right. Um, Lucky Hank, AMC, working with Bob Odenkirk. Uh, tell me about booking that gig. And he's, you know, a legend himself. Yeah. I, you know, when you get auditions, um, for those of you that don't know, it's just your agent just sends you the breakdown and the sides. And then now in the age of COVID, there are no in-person auditions anymore. So you just kind of film it in your bedroom, wherever you have space. I do it on my phone because thank God phones have good cameras now. <laughs> um, and when I saw that it was for, you know, Bob Odenkirk's new show, I was like, wow, this is a great opportunity. I hope the producers see me. There's no way I'm going to book that. Because, you know, as actors, I think a lot of us are very self-deprecating and we never truly believe that we're going to get that role we really dream of. Um, so I did the audition. I filmed it just, you know, as myself, the best I could do. And I was like, you know, even if I don't book it, because I thought they'd bring in a name or something because it's a very star studded show. So I was like, I won't book it, but at least they'll see me. And then I just got the email saying, hey, you've been shortlisted. And I couldn't believe it. Just end of the week, they were like, yep, you've booked it. You're doing it. And then of course came the walking on to set with people like Bob Odenkirk and Oscar Nunez and, you know, these legends in comedy um, that I really look up to. And I definitely made a bit of my fool, a fool of myself when I uh, met Bob Odenkirk <laughs> um, because I've been acting for a while since I was seven. I expect to be professional. I'm used to it. I know what I'm doing. He walked in the room and my mind went blank. <laughs> respect i probably would have done the same um yep. but now you're learning with legends so are you like becoming like a student of the craft all over again when you work with people that are so you know legendary like you've been in the game for a bit like uh anything you've picked up and i also have to add though as an actor myself as well that does this to in between the times until we get those projects right um i love zoom uh and uh zoom auditions let me be at home like come on now like yeah just exactly. anyway exactly Exactly. Yeah. And I think um, I definitely miss getting to go in person and seeing people. That's true. But there's also that aspect of when it's on Zoom, a self tape I find takes more work. But on yeah. Zoom, it's like, so much easier to just do it. Okay. And I'm still in my bedroom and possibly in my sweatpants. But um, yeah, working with such legendary people. I've been very lucky in my career to get to work with legends and, you know, Bob Odenkirk most recently. Watching him is just seeing a human behave. Mm. You know, when he's acting, there is no trace of acting there. He really just embodies his character and becomes it. And you, you don't see anything like, oh, he's remembering his lines or wow, that was great delivery. It's just, he's just a person speaking and that's what i definitely look up to in actors and especially in bob odenkirk that i try to achieve for myself um that definitely working and being in the same room as him you know that's the best class you can do as an actor you can do all the like sessions and coaching you want um but for me personally i only really learn from doing and so being on set with people that's the best way to become a better actor let's go i love that and let me just tell you lila you earned your place in that room. So you are on your way to be a legend yourself. So just, just brush those shoulders off. You you earned your place in that room. That's respect. So mm -hmm. your role in Lucky Hank, can you tell us a little bit about your character without giving away too much? We don't want to spoil anything and what you wanted to bring to that role. Yeah, I, I can't say much because I actually don't know exactly what I'm allowed to say. <laughs> so I'm keeping it pretty tight and only saying what AMC has already said. Yeah. Um, but I play Ava. She is a student at the college and she joins a committee to avert mediocrity. But I have some ulterior motives. And I think what I wanted to bring to it was being, you know, a character who's funny and can make people laugh without being incredibly over the top and just mm -hmm. being, you know, a person that is fitting into this dry comedy that the show 
the lucky thing about Lucky Hank is the writing is absolutely amazing. Mm. It's some of the best material I've ever gotten to work with. So you don't really have to try. When you get good writing as an actor, it's been handed to you on a silver platter. All you have to do is show up, say your words, sink into it. hope it comes across on screen. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And that's very true. Very true. So was it a bit of a challenge at first for you to like adjust, make those adjustments or on those notes uh, when you, you know, kind of got deeper into the production? Yeah, I think what's funny is going from, you know, Right now, the two projects I have are both comedies, but they're incredibly different because the acting of Monster High, when you're entirely airbrushed green and you have blue hair and you're doing it for Nickelodeon versus an AMC show for Bob Odenkirk, is a very different style. So I really made sure beforehand that, you know, I was playing as a real person instead of a zombie. And I think the thing for me is... I try to be natural. The second I overthink things or get too into my head or try to workshop something too much, it becomes stilted and rehearsed. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is kind of learn the lines. There's a Viola Davis um, has the best acting advice I've ever seen is um, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember it exactly, but it's learn the lines and then throw it away. Mm. So basically make sure you know what you're supposed to say, be prepared as much as you can. And then when you show up to set, just be ready for whatever you th- people throw at you because you have no idea what your scene partner is going to actually do the scene as, you know, running it with my mom and then running it with whoever I'm acting alongside going to be completely different. And that should influence how I respond to them, not how I've rehearsed to respond to them. I love that. I love that. I like getting this vibe with other actors as an actor, you know, I you get yeah. pro tips you know, what we're all doing and and getting confirmation that we're doing the right thing and we're still learning along the way. So that's beautiful. So thank you for echoing that and saying that because I think it's it's all a journey, you know, for us to get better. So you've been on this journey, dancing, (laughs) acting, and now writing, you know, and learning from legends, Uh, stars and swashbucklers, uh, the last uh Mont Morency. How do I say the, the, the saga? Talk to me about this book. So it's the last Montmorency saga. It will be seven books long, unless I have the same issue I had with the first book. Um, This is actually, Stars and Swashbucklers was um, about 750 pages long. And I was querying it. And the feedback I got back from agents and publishers was, you have a really great story, Mm. uh, but it's not marketable as a debut novel. And Mm. so what I did was I looked at it, I went back and I was thinking, I can't cut anything from this. What am I supposed to do? And I suddenly realized, oh, wait, I have two books in here. I can very easily shift a few things around. The story will be better afterwards. So I had to go all the way back to the editing process that I had finally completed, re-edit the book and split it in half. So this is actually, you know, was half of a book, but really is a complete book on its own. Um, so very grateful to the people I queried for taking the time to give real feedback and saying, hey, it's, that's two books. <laughs> um, so yeah. now the lucky thing for me is that I have the second book pretty much written. Um, yeah. it's, it's It was a long process and it's very exciting. And it's set in a futuristic fantasy world where Earth has shattered into islands floating between the stars. I'm big into sailing. I started sailing actually because I love pirates and I was writing a book about pirates in outer space and I figured I should know how to sail a boat. (laughs) So I did that and now I'm still doing it. I'm a coach. I, you know, I've competed a bunch. Um, Oh, wow. I I dive into things head first when I get into them. Same as with my book. It started as a dream that was really cool. And it kind of, um, writing it was almost just writing fan fiction for a dream I had. Yeah. And then when I finished writing that book, I was like, well, it's original work. It's, I can do it. Um, But yeah, it follows an average girl um, as she journeys on a luxury cruise. She's stuck in class two and she's sailing across the islands And while that happens, she ends up in the middle of a plot to find a mysterious relic. So she sort of journeys to become a privateer and find out all the mysteries and um, betrayals that are going on on this ship. Oh, exciting. I dig that. I love the concept. (laughs) Uh, And I love how like 
with actors, you know, we researched for parts. You did research for this book and learning, like you just said, to pilot a boat and all of that. Just uh, were there any like past experiences that when you started writing the book, uh, well, now books, you know, that it's going to be that like any family friends were like, like, did you pull from like stories of life uh, in, and incorporate it? And they're like, hey, was that this situation or experience? Um, any funny tidbits like that from uh, working on this? I do actually. There's um a moment with a fancy dinner in the um book, and the dish that's served is an eggplant dish, and my character um Anya Marcox uh tries to eat it and it's disgusting and she's like trying not to throw up at this table full of like royalty and esteemed privateers, and that's based on what happened to me when I um went to Berlinale for the film um Everything Will Be Fine. I was at a fancy dinner with all these very established European filmmakers. Um, and one of the dishes for, I'm vegan, I was vegetarian at the time, and the vegetarian dish was an eggplant thing. And I immediately knew, oh, I'm not going to like that. But my <laughs> mom said, oh, try it, try it, it'll be good. Yeah. And I tried it, and I almost had to spit it out at the table because oh. I'm not an eggplant fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that worked its way into the book. And I I liked being able to pull little funny pieces um you know, that were childhood stories or embarrassing moments and turn them into these fantasy versions in the book. I love that. Yeah, as an author as well, like I pull from life, you know, we pull from our experiences. And then I get I get friends saying that a lot, like, hey, was that that? Yeah, maybe so. Just, you know, twist it up a little bit. Um, when you were getting notes, did you uh, agree? Well, obviously you, you needed that proper feedback, right? We all aren't perfect all out the gate. When did you re did you get that self reflection? Yeah, like, yeah, it fits better. And was it a you know a, a interesting learning experience to you know move forward with all of this input uh, as well? Absolutely, I spent. Um, it's been years in the making. I wrote the yeah. first when I was um, I think fifteen, um, and of course, looking back at that draft, it's hilarious to see the difference in my writing even just from chapter one to the final chapter in it um so like through the years obviously just as experience and um writing a bunch has made me a better writer and also that feedback I've gotten from you know just even just my mom or my friends who've read the book um you know beta readers people I've queried has all informed it and especially you know, then through all the publishing process um, to be able to take constructive criticism. But also what I think is really important is to be able to hold your story as your own and, you know, know when, no, this is artistic integrity. I cannot mm -hmm. change this. And yeah. no one's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a little messed up. I don't know why I did that. I love that. Oh, man, I just love seeing young actors, young stars like yourselves building, learning, and contributing, and just, uh, yeah, just following their own path, and uh, and then being flexible to that, to that, that feedback as well, uh, but then not compromising ourselves, so like you said it all, uh, it's amazing. It's my mind. <laughs> yeah. It takes, I think I'll spend my entire life trying to figure out how to actually walk it, but we I'm do. Working. <laughs> uh, you'll love to see it. And props to you. When when does this first book drop? I know you have a signing coming up. Uh, I saw recently with Chevalier's book. Shout out to them. Uh, wh when is the first book drop? And what is the plan as for the the next phases of the books to roll out? Like one a once a year? Or? Well, so the first book is coming out April fourth. Okay. And I do have a live signing launch at Chevalier's Books in L.A. Um, oldest indie bookstore in L.A., which I'm really into independent hey. bookstores. So I'm excited about that. Love that. Uh, and for the rest of the books, uh, I need to polish up the second manuscript before I send it to my publisher. I'm not letting anyone look at it until I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but definitely, I think the plan is either six months or a year from now, just kind of depending on how fast we can get it out there. Okay. I have a lot of books planned I have a lot of books already written there's also you know I need to write spin-offs for some of the characters backstories so that later books in the series will make sense um, so hoping to you know get them out as quickly as I can because um, it's set in what I call the broken world which is the world I've created 
Um, and I'm basically going to be chronicling the pseudo history of this broken world in reverse through my series. So wow. Last Month Morrency is the first series I'm writing in this world, but it actually takes will be the last timeline wise series. And we'll move backward through time to eventually finding out how the earth shattered, what led up to that. Exciting, exciting. So many years to come of yes. amazing work. <laughs> from Lila Fitzgerald, uh, you love to see it. Um, so I have to ask you, ask you this, as an author, writer, actor, you know, I have many hats like you, uh, and I love to see mutual people that can't stop cre being creative, just do do the do. Um, I'm sure you're gonna get asked this as well, because you're an actor writing a book, <laughs> they're gonna be like, um, so when Lila, are we gonna get like the film adaptation? When is this happening? Are there any thoughts to that to a degree? Or are you just trying to keep it centered in just novelization right now? I'm definitely thinking about that. Um, okay. Obviously, as someone who's an actor and been in the film and TV world, I would love to act in my own um, stories. And I think, you know, more actors are writing their own stories to tell. And I really look up to that. And that's definitely something I want to do. I've been honored to tell so many beautiful stories, but it's time to tell my own through many mediums. And yeah. I am very, very lucky that I still retain all the rights to my book and my story. Usually when you sell it to a publisher, you sell everything. And I was able to keep my rights. So yeah. I was very cautious about that in all of my process, making sure that I still own the story so that I can do whatever I want with it. So now it's just down to letting the book release and seeing who wants to turn it into a TV show. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I love it. You know, uh, as an actor who's been in the game for a while, carving my own IPs out there, um, seeing this new generation do it as well and not settling because that happens a lot. Um, so you just, I just love to see it. Props to you, Lila. Uh, I, and just doing all the things, you know, working on big properties like Monster High, Lucky Hank, creating your own legend. And again, you deserved and you earned that right to be in that room. And now with your own project, Stars and Swashbucklers, it's got to be an exciting time right now. Family's got to be super proud. It's it's very exciting. I'm, you know, definitely juggling a lot of things, but also like I said, I like to keep busy. And it honestly at this point doesn't really feel real because I'm still Lila. I'm just, you know, sitting in my bedroom writing my little books. It doesn't always compute to me that oh, I'm going to be, you know, releasing this book. It's coming out for the world. Um I'm going to be doing a live launch and a signing, you know, that's something I've dreamed of. And now I'm sort of every so often it like goes ding in my brain and I have this moment of utter panic, like, wait, what? No one's going to want to read my book. And I think that's something we feel as, you know, actors and writers and dancers is there's society makes us feel like we are never enough. And so we have to take the time to celebrate our wins. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. I'm an empath. If you didn't know that by now already as well. I could tell. <laughs> all the vibes right now, all the props, all the flowers to you, Lila. As you continue the journey, please come back. Let's chat. When you can talk more on things, I want to give you those flowers. I want to give you your props. Um, so amazing. I love to see it. And now another example for me to show my daughter that she can do it too. And you're that. So thank you for what you are doing. Um, for people that are listening to this while driving in their cars i'm in the dc area and so a lot of us are in our cars a lot because it's a lot of traffic and you're in la too so you know about traffic mm -hmm. <laughs> how can people check you out online i will have all the links in the description below but how can people check out lila fitzgerald and see everything you got going on so the best place to keep updated is definitely social media um my handle is lila fitzgerald on every single platform. I'm lucky I got that early so no one else could take it. Right. Um, the same everywhere. It's just Lila Fitzgerald. I post um, a teaser from my book every Tuesday. Um, so you can know every Tuesday you'll see a little snippet of my writing to get everyone hyped up for the release. Um, and that's the best place to stay updated. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lila. Again, uh, a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, I love to see it. Somebody who's been in this for a long time and just seeing, you know, people creating their own path and and starting their own journey, creating their own IPs and doing a million and one things as well, all at the same time, <laughs> because we love it. And we're, yeah, it's, I can see that through you. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for having me on. I'm really excited and very honored to get the chance oh, to chat with you. Definitely. Um, so last question. I, I almost forgot this. I was about to close it out. 
but I've been <laughs> trying to do this more often because uh, you are on NRW where nerds rule the world. I think you're a card carrying nerd and there's nothing wrong being a card. I'm a card carrying nerd. What I like to ask people when I close things out now is what do you get nerdy about? So obviously you're a writer. You love YA, you love fantasy, you like boats, you like pirates. Um, but what is something we don't know or fans don't know about you that you're really nerdy about? I would say something I'm actually super nerdy about is um, obviously YA novels and a bunch of those. But The Legends of King Arthur is something that I am quite the nerd about. Um, okay. My travel book to come to L.A. and do all of this stuff is actually Le Morte d'Arthur, um, which isn't the lightest beachside read. But I really just, you know, I love tales of chivalry and, um, you know, old Celtic stories. I dig that. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Lila. Again, everybody check out Lila Fitzgerald and Lucky Hank coming to AMC. Monster High sequel coming soon. Gulia Yelps. Uh, as well as Star and Stars and Swashbucklers, the last Montmorency saga. I hope I got that right again. Uh, amazing fantasy novel with Dark Frog books. Uh, check it out. Lila Fitzgerald on everything. I'll have all her links in the description below. This was so much fun. Really appreciate your time, Lila. Thank you. No worries. It's your boy Kuya P. This is Nerds Rule the World. Until next time, love y'all.